if they lose, then that on top of the fact that they've looked shaky all season long, you're starting to wonder, is Ryan Day the guy? First up, we've got Penn State, Illinois. We're going to go through each of the games. Well, we got three games. First up, Penn State, Illinois. We've got five minutes for each game. Looking for uh, some bigger prey. Uh, they're hungry for that bigger win, and this could be it. If they can take down Penn State, I said, nevertheless, why did I say I said? The former third string, now second string quarterback, and uh, people on Twitter are talking. Should he be the starter now? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is Big Ten Chatter on Big Ten Team Rivalry. I'm Cliff, and with me, as always, is Mr. Something Burger himself, Big Mac. How you doing, Mac? Something Burger? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Good. Thanks for joining us and being on Team Rivalry and subscribing. Uh, we are up to a full quarter thousand right now. Woo! I wanted to say that twice. I know I said it in the last video, but it's fun. This video is a two-part video. We asked the question, does the bowl game matter if you're not in the CFP playoffs? Specifically, we're looking at Ohio State for this video. In part one, we were looking at Northwestern, so keep an eye out for that. Should be coming to a YouTube channel near you, uh, this one. Mac, Ohio State dominated the Big Ten virtually uncontested from 2002 to 2020. Yeah. Whoa. It's been an impressive run in that time frame. Ohio State is 211 and 35 overall. <laughs> since 2000? Since 2002. Holy crap. <laughs> 11 conference championships, two national championships. They are 16 and 2 against Michigan, 13 and 3 against Michigan State, 15 and 4 against Penn State, and 12 and 3 against Wisconsin. Wow. In the last three years, though, They've lost to Michigan three times, lost out on the Big Ten Championship three times. They've been to the playoffs twice and are one and one for the first round with no championships. If this were any other school, the last three years would still be considered outstanding, but this is Ohio State, right? So last week we talked about Kyle McCord, uh, Kyle McCord leaving, and some of the possible implications for Ohio State. This week we're going to discuss by looking at the Cotton Bowl, what it means for this program. And I just saw a quote from Ryan Day. He said, we had a situation a couple of years ago, okay, he's talking about the Rose Bowl, where he built momentum, where we, we built momentum in the next year. We always want to be playing for a championship this time of year. So at the Rose Bowl, I believe they, they uh, for 2020, no, 2021, I'm sorry, the Rose Bowl for 2021, they lost some key players, but they went to the Rose Bowl and uh, played well. So Mac and that, that build <laughs> helped them build into the next year, although they're still in that season of not beating Michigan and not winning the conference. But Mac, here's the question. If number seven, Ohio State loses to number nine, Missouri in the Cotton Bowl, what will it mean for recruiting, the future of the program? And let's talk about it again, Ryan Day himself. So I think I got to correct one thing real quick. They, oh, they've no. been to the playoffs once in the last three years, not twice. I think you said twice. Are you sure? I thought they were one and one in the no. first round. Uh, they. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I, I think I'm including. No. Yeah. 21 and 22. No, they didn't go in 21 In 21. They went to the Rose bowl uh, against Utah, but that wasn't a playoff game. Oh, okay. Okay. I got yeah. confused because it is this year. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they switch. Um, okay, so what did we say? Recruiting, future of the program, and Ryan Day? And Ryan Day himself, yeah. Okay, so recruiting um, doesn't seem to be affected. It doesn't seem to matter that recruiting doesn't seem to be affected because right now Ohio State is, has the number one Big Ten or number one recruiting class uh, in the Big Ten and the number two recruiting class overall. Oh, wow. So recruiting okay. <laughs> doesn't seem to be affected. Yeah, they're they're doing really good. They've got five five star signed, thirteen four star signed. So they're they're doing really good. The thing right. is though, is that that also doesn't necessarily matter because they've had the number two or a top five recruiting class the last three seasons and have or last 
for less like 30 million seasons. <laughs> I can't remember the last time Ohio State had a, a recruiting class that wasn't in the top five. They just keep rolling. Top four, 2023 was top four. I just really fast want to double check. Mm-hmm. This 2022, 2022, they were number four. 2021, they were number two. 2020, they were number five. 2019, last one. Oh, 14. Wow. How about that? Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> so 2019 aside, um, they've got a bunch of top five recruiting classes. So recruiting doesn't seem to be affected per se. Um, I don't know how that was number 19. That's crazy because all of those guys, I guess this would have been their senior year. So they'd all be graduating, except they also have the COVID year. So whatever. So for the future of the program, <laughs> Ohio State there a lot of people say i can't remember who it was exactly but somebody on espn said that you know michigan it, michigan wants to beat ohio state ohio state is looking beyond that no they're not okay and i'm not saying that they can't play beyond that because clearly they can they they took georgia to the wire last year they came within a missed field goal of winning a national championship let's be honest they would have waxed the floor with tcu like michigan should have and didn't so ohio state like they can play with anyone. Um, they're not beating Michigan right now. Michigan is a team built to beat Ohio State and is trying to be a team that can be like Ohio State and also play with anybody else, but Ohio State is tripping up on Michigan every year. Why is that? Either because Michigan, the way that they've built their program, is in such a way that they are specifically going after Ohio State's weaknesses and practicing basically just that all year long for a 60-minute football game and then throwing everything else to the wayside. Um, or Ohio State is losing some traction. I wouldn't have said the latter until watching them this season because they they struggled at some point in basically every single game except for a few um, in some capacity until they played Michigan, in which case their struggles were warranted because they were going up against another top five team. So they won by two scores at Wisconsin. That's ridiculous. So did Northwestern. They struggled against Indiana. That's ridiculous. Indiana sucks. Um, they were they were struggling against Maryland. Michigan did too. So I'll give them that. But they were struggling against Maryland. That's not good. Maryland's not a good team right now. They're they're up and down. So for the future of the program right now, things are this is kind of at a crossroads. Things are looking a little shaky. So if they beat Missouri then yeah, they can take that momentum into 2024 and start building on that because they've got a really good recruiting class coming in. If they lose, then that, on top of the fact that they've looked shaky all season long, you're starting to wonder, is Ryan Day the guy? Now that brings me to my thoughts on Ryan Day. You're you're at Ohio, as ridiculous as this is in the modern college football game, okay? One game defines... Ohio State season. And and frankly, it does at Michigan too, but we had lost to Ohio State so many times, we were just like, yeah, whatever, let's just try and be competitive with them or we'll take the one game, but we're not going to fire a coach just because they lose one game a season or even two or three. You know, we were we were just hoping to get recovered from the Rich Rod and Brady Hoke years. Um, no offense, Matt, but let's be honest, they didn't do well. Um, so we were never going to fire Harbaugh, but Ohio State – they're so far above that level that yeah, they'll they'll fire Ryan Day if he loses to Michigan a fourth time. If if Ohio State has anything less than a perfect season next year, I am very much concerned about Ryan Day, especially if he loses to Missouri. And there have been so many transfers, and I don't even see any news on opt-outs because I think that they're not opting out. I think all their players are just transferring. They've got 15 players in the transfer portal right now. Marvin Harrison Jr. hasn't decided whether or not he's going to the NFL. Ohio State's in some serious trouble for this game. They started out um, a six and a half point favorite and are now underdogs mm-hmm. by two points, I think. Um, so in terms of going into next season, a little bit worrisome if they lose to Missouri and especially for Ryan Day. What just occurred to me while you were saying that is that, yeah, if they lose to Missouri, there are so many coaches out there that would love to pick up a program like Ohio State. And if there's blood in the water, you can bet 
that the 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 AD and the president at Ohio State are going to have their pick of coaches. <laughs> you don't think so? I, I don't know. I mean, no, they. Can, I mean, they, they could. Can... I mean, they could call up anybody they wanted. I think and say, hey, how, yeah. I mean, outside of like maybe, uh, um, uh, shoot, Nick Saban George, and Kirby George's Smart. coach and Nick Saban, yeah. Yeah, so Kurt, yeah, so Ohio State wouldn't be able to get Kirby Smarter or Nick Saban for obvious reasons. Right. But yeah, you're you're right. Theoretically, they should be able to get whoever they want. But also, who wants this job? <laughs> I, I mean, mean, yeah, it's it's a it's a high profile job. It's because mm-hmm. you know your your Michigan's, Ohio State's, Alabama's, and and Clemson's and Georgia's, they're high profile. They're high pressure, extraordinarily high pressure jobs. But yeah. they also pay really well. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I guess my thing is though, I mean, okay, this isn't, this isn't like a Minnesota situation where if you, if you fail coaching here, you're never going to coach again, kind of a thing. Yeah. Like I think, although their last coach finally got a new job, I think he's uh coach kill is coaching New Mexico state. Yeah. Anyway, my, yeah, my point is, is that like, if you come to Ohio State I, I, and and no coach goes to a new job saying like, OK, how many losses am I allowed per year? Like they're not going in thinking that they're thinking like, OK, I'm going to build this program the, to the best of my ability. We're shooting for 12 and 0. We're shooting for conference championships. We're shooting for national championships. Like, obviously, if you come to Ohio State, you're not going to ask how many losses you're going to be allowed. Like, that's not how it works. Right. But in the back of your mind, you got to be thinking Look, if I lose one game, they're going to be very upset with me, especially if it's that one game. Yeah. Do I really want to deal with that kind of pressure? Like, do I really want to lose to Michigan three years in a row and, and have to deal with everybody calling for my head, despite the fact that I've won 33 other games? Like, I don't know. I don't don't know. know. I wouldn't want that job. (laughs) You can watch Ohio State play Missouri uh, if you're one of the few people that still watches ESPN. They'll be in the Cotton Bowl December 29th at 8 p.m. And I guess if you're a non-Michigan fan, you might even root for Ohio State. I don't know. I probably... Anyway, anything else you want to add to that, Mac? (laughs) I kind of want Ohio state to win because I don't think that they're going to have a good year next year. So I just, (laughs) I I just want you guys to be happy. (laughs) Just want you to be happy. Look, just please be happy. (laughs) Thank you for sticking with us. You are on team rivalry and I hope you, we earned, I hope you, I hope you earned our, we, you, I hope we get there. You know what I'm talking about. I hope we earned your (laughs) subscription. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think about what we think. Don't forget to make football fun again. And before I ramble on any further and trip over my words, Mac, take us out. This is Big Ten Team Rivalry. I think you mean flim flam flim frivolly. Flim flam. Yep. That's what I that's what I meant was flim flammery. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give us a subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. Maybe even a like, possibly even a comment. Let us know your thoughts and all that. It would be really great to hear from you all. Have a great weekend watching football and enjoy watching football. Remember, hashtag make football fun again. This is Big Ten Team Rivalry.